raising of a nation because the role played, whether consciously or not, in the lives of our youth by adults matters. I'm speaking on this through first-hand knowledge. I was born in Jackson Ward Projects and raised in Blackwell Projects in Richmond, Virginia. To all the youngsters who have unloving fathers, I know you. Those who witness their mother never buy herself a new pair of shoes or coat or saw her cry because she couldn't feed you or it's because she couldn't pay the rent, y'all got put out the projects. Or your little brother and sisters told you they hungry and it all hurt your heart. I am you because that's my beginning too. So like you, I turned to the hustlers of the hood who in my eyes seemed to not have the problems my family did because I was searching for a way to turn things around for my family. Not then understanding how that choice would take me deep into a darker world. Looking back, I see times where I thought I was winning. Now I'm realizing I not only was losing, I was setting a foundation for generations following me to lose too for being a gangster and hustler to the fullest takes a lot of dedication to the ugliness that controls that world where cold-heartedness is your armor. Because even with it, survival is short-lived. I stand before you today, incarcerated since January 2nd, 1988, serving life plus 10 years convicted of first-degree murder and various other crimes. I've come a very long way, emotionally and mentally, since entering prison as an uneducated 28-year-old. Back then, it was gang more. Live by it, die by it. Everyone in it was on it. There was a code that was never to be broken. Then came the 1990s. The cold started vanishing, especially loyalty. Snitching and crossing became the new thing, placing the game on life support. Today, youth care more about their image than their character. Everyone should leave it alone. It always comes to an ugly ending. I try to spread this message because no one who lived it before me told me the whole truth about the gangster lifestyle. I've learned that more than any other element, nations are built through examples by elders as seen in the eyes of our youth during their formative years of growth. In 1998, at Greensville, I shared a cell with an 18-year-old who grew up in Blackwell Projects. Cuz doing life plus 40 years, new law, a very ugly situation, but he handled it well as a man should. One day he told me, homie, when y'all got locked up, we wanted to be just like y'all. We had the drug game on lock, the guns, the jewels, the caddies with the ragtops sitting on trues and bows. Then he asked me, you think I'm ever going to get back out there? His question blew my heart as it forced me to face the reality of my past actions because I was then realizing that the legacy I left in the world was but a source of detriment in the communities I was so proudly announcing I was a part of. Then came March 15, 2001. I was at King Mountain. My counselor came to the door, told me to come to her office. I was told my 19-year-old son was shot and killed instantly. My old instincts telling me to seek some get back. But during a conversation with my favorite aunt, my thinking would change dramatically. 
we talked about a conversation I'd had with my mother some years prior. There was an attempt on my life. I had retaliated. Word of it reached my mother. My mother told me that if I were killed, it would kill her. I told my mother then I didn't want to outlive her because she was everything good about people. And my only goodness was the love I had for those I considered to be my people. My aunt then asked me how I really felt about my son's death. It was at that moment I realized it felt like someone had both their hands in my chest and was squeezing my heart. I told my aunt then, due to how I'd lived my life, it was like poetic justice for me to go through it. But I was at that moment ashamed at the thought that I could have caused someone good like my mother to feel as badly as I then and now feel about my son. So now, rather than taking dude's life who killed my son, I'd rather help raise millions of little Dwayne Bolins, become scholars, business leaders, doctors, politicians who truly care, just for some greatness in the name of the son I failed to properly raise. Because I know in my heart that the tragedies in the hood will only continue to grow unless those of us with painful legacies there return to those communities and lead them with messages and examples of a better way. If I'm ever blessed to be released from prison, I'll work on my vision of forming a foundation in the name of my deceased son, Terrell Dominique Goodnight. His goals would be to develop, encourage, promote, and support our at-risk youth to truly great heights through their natural productivity. I stand before the adults and youth of America today, changed from facing my past truthfully, blessed with a real understanding and wisdom of all my mistakes. I don't have all the required expertise or resources, so I passionately call upon the adult community to pool their resources by joining me so that we can preserve this country's most prized resource and treasure, our young people. Please join the cause of raising our nation properly. Thank you.